colleagues. I welcome you all to the next lecture of this course. We will be continuing on zinc dust that we had uh, discussed in the previous class. And uh, we know that uh, zinc dust has been uh, an important uh, waste that is containing zinc. It can have good amount of iron and zinc in it. And of course, there are the other elements that are coming into picture. And we have seen that apart from various types of wastes uh, that are produced in different uh, streams of production, it is important to note that zinc dust is a raw material for lot many valuable products. So, and we have also seen different types of processing routes, pyrometallurgical completely or pyrohydro combined or some other routes that involve briquetting or agglomeration, which are basically the unit operations involved in uh, handling the uh, EAF dust, the zinc dust. Now, one of the most important ways by which we can have the extraction of iron and zinc from EAF dust is the rotary kiln process, the Wales process. The, this process is supposedly one of the most important process that can help in recovering zinc from uh, the uh, EAF dust, the zinc dust. So, let us just focus on the uh, Wales process, the rotary kiln process of extraction of zinc from EAF dust. So, as you have just noted, major portion of EAF dust or rather we can have zinc dust as processed through rotary kiln process, the RK process, rotary kiln, Wales process or we can also have Wales kiln process, it is most widely used. So, what is the dimension? We can have 50 meter long. That is a very long kiln with a diameter of 3 to 4 meters and as mechanism of rotation. Rotation operation. And the RPM that can be present is around 0 0.5 to 1.6 RPM. So, we have 50 meter long, diameter is 3 to 4 meters and we and the, the kiln itself rotates. So, this long and huge kiln is used for zinc dust, EAF dust processing. Now, what it really does is basically it consumes the EAF feed with the carbon source and the carbon source is coal. The carbon source is coal used for uh, the combustion operation and how and how really does this process go on? It goes in various steps. We will discuss the steps one after the other. Step 1, moist material sent to the kiln. And of course, one more point is important to note that it takes around 4 to 6 hours of operation. 
So once we feed it, we'll have to sit for around four to six hours for the finished product. So we have the moist material feeding, then we have reduction. And of course, we note that uh, the, the carbon source is also fed inside. So reduction is done at 1100 to 1200 degrees Celsius. And what we get here is metal oxide start to reduce. Now, high vapor pressure high vapor pressure zinc other alkali alkali metals are removed high vapor pressure metals due to their volatile nature So what really happens here is when we are having the reduction operation, we have the oxide formation and its reduction. And when that happens, the zinc and other al alkali metals are removed due to their volatile nature. So these are getting collected into the gas phase. What happens after that? So we can have step D separation when when this part is done we can have separation separation of whales oxide this whale whales oxide and is basically the slag and the other gases these whales oxide is important for material balancing so we can have some amount of zinc getting entrapped in the oxide phase as well. Of course, most of the zinc is getting removed, but the oxide is also getting generated. And that it, it can be used as a raw material for other processes. The slag is discharged. Slag is discharged. by deslagging and finally we have separation of phases phases now this itself is a very complicated process so not just the kiln it is the gas phase that is also very important and the gas phase is going to give us zinc. So EAF dust, zinc dust being processed in rotary kiln will give us whale, whales oxide. That is the solid product. Of course, it is the solid product that will be uh, obtained after this, uh, the, uh, this slag is removed. But the gaseous products that are generated in the rotary kiln have to be collected for metal recovery and dust recovery. So although we are processing a dust, it generates a secondary dust, secondary baghouse dust, which could be used for other metal recovery. That is what we are trying to understand here. So we have coarser particles, step A of uh, separation of gas phases, we have coarse particles are removed. These coarse particles are removed by mechanical means. So one has to catch these uh, coarser particles 
and again these are used as raw materials for reuse as raw materials back in the you know so it means that we can see imagine that this raw material is going to be reused here of course one could think that uh, this is just a circular application but that is how it is being reutilized and a material is not sub, uh, not discarded the second way the second step is the dusty catch dusty gas is cleaned by precipitator so this helps in removal of the dusts that are present in it and finally dust free gas is used dust free gas is used for recovery of mercury cadmium etc so we have different types of routes in the glass cleaning stage as well so that we are able to extract zinc and other metals from it and we are able to uh, process every step every step efficiently and take care of the materials that are generated in the process in the rotary kiln operation we will now continue our discussion on zinc scraps so we have till now discussed various types of zinc wastes we have discussed zinc dross zinc dust and uh, now we will be focusing on the last aspect of this course for uh, that is pertaining to zinc that is and it is zinc scrap so let us now focus on the next aspect which is zinc scrap so we already know that zinc has a wide range of applications in various fields so it is expected that zinc that is in service will eventually come back after its use back for recycling in the form of scrap now one has to really understand what is the source of the scrap for understanding what could be extracted from it and the source of scrap is basically the area in which zinc is being applied so let us now have a quick recap of what uh, zinc is used in what are the areas in which zinc zinc is used and what are the potential areas of scraps where we can extract our zinc from so one has to think of applications of zinc applications of zinc why is this important because this helps us in understanding the raw material which is basically the scrap for zinc recovery so the different categories of applications are of course the chief one is hot dip galvanization we already discussed that hot dip galvanization zinc ash formation is happening here we have alloying of brasses alloyings and production of brass and bronze and of course other zinc alloys as well so we have die casting alloys as well rolled alloys zinc based chemicals
and rolled metals rolls in metals and and so many other areas in which it is produced now we can also have some important applications uh, that uh, important alloys that are in service so let us just put some of the examples rolled zinc alloys and we have die cast so for rolled we can have these are the specifications of the uh, rolled alloys and similarly die cast would be and so on so forth so these are the various alloys that are normally produced using zinc as one of the main constituents and we know that these applications are using zinc so eventually we will get scraps from these sources only the finished product of these uh, applications are going to be used in different areas and after these products reach their end of life these will be discarded which will bring, bring us the raw material for scrap utilization now the categories of scraps we'll discuss some categories of scraps and this is very interesting because the scraps are important feed but one has to categorize them before we are directly we are if before we even plan to use them categorized scrap are easier to use so construction and demolition that is one area end of life eol is basically end of life vehicles so one could also say elvs waste electrical electric and electronic equipment which we already know as v or at times it can be also considered as e waste which is an of course an important part of what we are going to discuss in the upcoming lectures and industrial electric waste i e w industrial non electric waste which is basically i n e w so these are some important categories uh, that are present and of course one of the most important category that we have not written yet is municipal solid waste msw the so when we have this categories of scraps we know that these are the potential areas from which we can easily extract zinc from of course one has to really categorize the scrap when we are processing them but we have identified the broad categories and then it becomes a lot easier to process these scraps now we'll have further discussion on how to process them one of the most common methods the most common method of reusing the scrap as remelting 
Now, what exactly are we doing with the remelting is what we are trying to figure out. It is dependent on what is the feed because at times we would be requiring refining as well. We will see how. So, we will make a small table. Source of scrap and zinc recovery operations. And we will just put the reference if we have bronze brass bronze we go for remelting we have zinc alloys so we can go for remelting we have galvanization galvanization products so here we can have new scrap or old scrap. In such a case, new scrap goes for remelting, the old scrap goes for refining. Rolled zinc, remelting, and we have others which may not be categorized in either of them. If we if that is new scrap that goes for remelting, if it is old scrap, it goes for refining. And we have discussed previously in the uh, in different uh, scraps of aluminum and copper, what really new scrap and old scrap means. New scrap is used directly within the processing unit, it is generated in the processing unit, it is reused in the processing unit, it is not really reaching the consumers, when it is reaching the consumer of course it is going to get used. The finished product that is reaching the consumer is going to get used and when it is getting used it will reach its end of life and then return. In that case it becomes old scrap. New scrap is generated within the uh, processing uh, units itself and they are consumed by the processing unit. So, it is important to note that the generation of scraps can happen in the uh, unit itself and that is why we have old scraps and new scraps and remelting operations. And it is important to note that apart from of course, we know that remelting is the most important route. Apart from that, the presence of trace elements. or contaminants in the old scrap at times the presence of the trace elements and contaminants in the old scraps in old scraps at times make it important to refine the scraps so that these trace elements are removed and then we are able to ex extract zinc as per our requirement. Make it necessary, makes it necessary to refine the feed, which is why refining is also included. Now, let us just focus on recovery of zinc from galvanized products. So, of course, one way of uh, using this galvanized product is just subjecting it as a scrap, but then the zinc would be lost. So, one can go off de of a of, of process called de-zincing. Now, de-zincing can be done through hydrometallurgical route. Let us just look at it. 
recovery of zinc from galvanized products. And of course, it is a hydrometallurgical rule and acidic also as well as alkaline both routes are available acid dissolution we have finally acid with zinc and by being what do we mean by with zinc basically it is dissolved in zinc and it can lead to zinc salts Similarly, when we look at alkaline roots, we have alkaline alkali dissolution alkali with zinc and this can lead to zinc products. Now, here is a generalized route. We have acid dissolution, we have of course, we fed the uh, galvanized product into the acid bath and we get acid with zinc. This acid leads to the generation of zinc salts. And similarly, we have the alkali dissolution. Again, we fed the galvanized product. We get alkali with zinc. The zinc is getting leached into the alkali and then we are finally getting zinc products after it is getting you know removed and processed. In both the cases what we also are getting here in both the cases we are also getting de-zincified. So, this is important de-zincified products which was the original target. Many a times it is this de-zincified products that is what people are targeting. But at the same time it is important to note that the alkali and the acids are going to give us zinc rich products also. So, one can think of both ways of extraction of zinc from acids and alkalis as well as this de-zinc product. Now, the generalized view of uh, zinc recovery has to be noted. We have seen so many different types of zinc wastes and uh, zinc scrap is also a good source of zinc. So, let us just now try to put a generalized overview of how zinc products are available in society and how zinc products should be recycled. So, let us just quick uh, overview of how it flows, how material flows. We have the mining operation, we have zinc production, primary goods, We have secondary goods, we have stock of EOL products which is basically the waste stream and scraps and of course, this is the scrap recycling. and we have enrichment which is basically the whales process that we had seen just now. We have mining it gives us zinc production and then we have primary goods and of course, it can some of the processes can go back some of the waste products can go back and then return as primary products. And when it is getting forward, we can have primary goods, 
getting converted into secondary goods. These secondary goods lead to the end of life products which are getting stocked and collected and then finally we have the scrap recycling. We know that most common method is refining and uh, remelting and refining and we also know that at times it can lead to the, uh, the at times there is that EAF dust and we have the whales process accompanying the recycling process to give us finally zinc rich products which are brought back to the zinc production main operation of uh, zinc production. Now at there are some internal cycles also which are very important. So we have this is new scrap and which is getting from the primary goods to the scrap recycling so it gets directly reused and we can have scrap recycling is going to primary goods so it is direct reuse direct use of scraps and this is also going into the scrap so this is also new scrap please mind that secondary goods and primary goods have not really reached the consumer so when we are actually producing and sending it only after that we get the conventional idea of scraps which is basically the stocks of EOL that is product products. We have already seen what type of products are present here yeah, the, uh, the V waste electrical and electrical electronic equipment and, uh, and so many different uh, waste streams that we have discussed previously. Those are the stocks where zinc could be uh, produced consumer products those are the areas where uh, uh, the scraps are coming from but primary go goods and the secondary goods are producing the new scraps only. Now what are the secondary goods after all let us just jot them down quickly construction construction applications we have transportation we have industrial applications similarly health healthcare products uh, consumer goods and other miscellaneous applications so these are the products that are about to reach and after of course you should write end of life it is getting stacked and after the stacking it gets recycled now one should note that this type of cycle that has been made for let us say this is specific for zinc this can be made for copper this can be made for aluminium this can be made for steel this can be made for any different type of material that we are interested in and it should be noted that efficient recycling of a process depends upon the uh, optimization of every step that we are looking at production uh, the production of goods primary or secondary uh, utilization in end of uh, till end of life its recovery from end of life to the scrap utilization or the recycling unit and then after recycling unit the metal or material should come back to the primary cycle this involves optimization at lot many different scales within the unit operation itself and at the consumer end as well. So now we have completed the uh, overall recycling of uh, various wastes that we had to discuss on zinc. We will be continuing our uh, discussion on different uh, waste stream from other sources in the upcoming classes. Thank you.